name is Sarah, I'm 11 years old and I go to Singapore Chinese Girls School. During my free time, I like to watch my phone and FaceTime my friends. Today, I am going to interview Adrian Pang, but I don't really know who he is. Your company's website says you're an artistic director. What is that? You are actually sitting in the um, rehearsal room of Hangdemonium, which is a theatre company that I run together with my boss. She's also my wife. That's why she's my boss. Her name is Tracy. In essence, the both of us uh, produce plays and musicals and we restage them. So as artistic director, we basically make decisions about what uh, kind of shows we want to produce, what kind of stories we want to tell and why we want to tell them. And then we run uh, Pangdemonium as best we can just so that we can keep on producing, producing our shows. What does kindness mean to you? Wow, what are deep questions. Okay, okay, not so deep, not, not that deep. They're not that deep, they're great questions, I love them. Um, I think kindness is essentially just being sensitive to others' feelings, being compassionate about others' um, needs, and actually taking some action to make somebody's life, make somebody's day, or make somebody's just one moment in time a little bit better a little bit easier to bear. And it can take many, many forms. You know, you can take from the simplest, simplest acts of courtesy to something that you invest in somebody else's life that just helps them live their life a little bit easier. Whose job is it to teach us to be kind? Our parents, our teachers? Well, I am a strong believer that it has to begin at home. It has to begin um, with parents. As a parent myself, it is absolutely my responsibility to try to impart and instill in my, my two sons um, what I see as all the right values. And being kind is absolutely one of the most important things. Um, actually, you ask anybody what they would see as the number one factor, the number one quality in someone that they want to, say, spend the rest of their life with. A lot of people will say kindness, not good looks or, or money or not, but, but kindness is, is such an important thing. Certainly, like I said again, as, as, as a father, I would hope that my two sons are growing up to be kind men who will be able to spread that kind of kindness to their worlds, you know, as they grow up. Do you think that that, that should be the case? My, our school does encourage us to be more kind. Mm -hmm. But then I think I agree with you because like, you don't go to school straight away when you're born. No, yeah, absolutely right. So you will start learning things when mm. you are at home. Yeah. So I think that kind of should be taught by both. I think you're right. I'm only a few years younger than your children. What do you think is the biggest problem facing my generation? Oh my goodness, that's a very complex and deep question. I think I already know the answer. Really? Okay, do you want to tell me the answer then? We use our phones a lot. Oh, that is definitely a big problem. <laughs> you definitely are glued to your phones much too much. Which is interesting in, in, in the sense that there is a danger that all of us, I mean, not just your generation, I mean, everybody with this thing in our pockets and this thing in our hands that we're so addicted to that we cannot bear to be not connected to this thing. I think we're fooling ourselves that we're actually being more connected to the world through this... Um... No, I know that I'm not, I guess. You're, you're not? You, 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 play, you play games, is it? I don't want to be connected to the world. Because what? there's scary uh -huh. people there. Yes, the world could be a scary place, yes. But we live in the real world though, so there's no escaping it. We have to face up to the fact that we live in a real world with real people. At the end of the day, we are still human individuals that have to interact with one another, right? We, can, we, we can't escape that. If there ever came a time where the whole internet crashed... I will cry. ...worldwide. What well, exactly? Well, there you go. We've become so reliant on that. 20 years ago, people weren't walking around with these things in, in our hands all the time. People talked more, families talked to each other more, friends talked to each other more. They didn't know any, any better, they didn't have any other choice other than to sit in a room and actually have conversations with one another. Rather than sitting in a room with either your friends or your family and half the people are actually tuning into something else. I think that in a way is kind of slightly destroying our social graces. And since we're talking about kindness here today, I think it has an effect on how people are just showing each other just basic 
kindness and decency. If you could change one thing about people in Singapore, what would it be? One thing about people in Singapore? Oh, just one. <laughs> what are they supposed to mean? <laughs> oh gosh, um, I think the Singaporeans, they're very tactless. They're very straight. Yeah, very straight as in very, very blunt. Yeah, I'm very, very tactless straight and, to my friends. Really? So you, would you be one of those who, after the school holidays, you come back to school and say, Wow, you put on so much weight! Yeah. Really? Like, but you know I'm joking. You know you're joking, okay. Because these people are not joking. The people, the guy who went up to me, Wow, you age a lot! He was not joking. Maybe you're not affected by this uh, at the moment, but in 10 years' time, you don't want your friends to go, Wow, Sarah, you put on weight, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> so yes, I think Singaporeans can, can exercise a little bit of tact. That's a, a form of kindness, I think. It's 2017 now. Uh, the world has gone through a lot of changes in the last couple of years, and in the next few years, it's going to go through more changes. We live in a little bit of an unstable time in the world and I think it's going to take every single human being to exercise compassion and kindness and sensitivity to, to one another that we make sure that we don't kind of crumble to nothing. And I think living in Singapore, we can um, often feel that, oh, it's okay, we're very safe here. But you know, Singapore, you know, is a small country and um, I think we all have to be just mindful, not just to protect ourselves, but also mindful of what we can actually do to make somebody else's life or our community a better place to, to live in. I think the easier option would be to go, oh, you know, um, it's too scary. I'm just going to keep to myself and look after myself. If everybody does that, our community will kind of fall apart. I think it takes everybody just being daring to make a first step and then keep on making those, those steps to touch each other's lives.